loves me and it raises that man's life. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. The giver of every breath I need, author of all eternity, the giver of every perfect thing to be born. The maker of heaven and of earth, Lord, no one can comprehend your word. You're king over all the universe, oh, to you be the glory. And I am alive because I'm alive in you. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. Yes, it is. Oh, and it's all because of blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, that covers me and it raises that man's life. Oh, it's all because of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. And it's all because of blood. Jesus Christ, oh, that covers me and it raises dead man's life, and it's all because of Jesus, it's every sunrise, sings your praise, the universe cries out your praise, I'm singing freedom. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and it raises dead man's life. Oh, it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. And it's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and it raises that man's life. Oh, it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. Oh, it's all because of you, Lord. It's all because of you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, O Lord. Hallelujah. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been here in the same old voice, tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. And if you feel lost, chain breaker if you 
been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell those same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, oh, there's a better life. I know a better life. Search for the light of day in the dead of night And we've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight And we've all run to things that we know they just ain't right Oh, and there's a better life Oh, there's a better life If you got paid testify if you believe it then you'll receive it and if you can feel it oh somebody testify if you believe it then you'll receive it oh and if you can feel it somebody testify testify if you believe it, then you'll receive it. And if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, then I believe you're going to receive it. If you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe And if you feel lost, he'll be your way maker. If you need freedom or saving, I know the prison shaking Savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, you are the chain breaker, Lord. You are the chain breaker, Lord. Oh, we give you honor, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We 
give you all the honor and the praise. All the honor and the praise belongs to you. Oh, it's worthy of your name. Turn it for 
This is how I find my battle. Oh, this is how, yeah. And this is how I find my battles. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, I am. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I fight my battles. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how, yeah. This is how I find my battles. Oh, it's through praise and worship. Oh, and this is how I find my battles. Oh, this is a battle winner. Oh, this is how I find my battles. Oh, this is how I find my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how I find my battles Oh, this is how Oh, this is how I find my battles This is how I find my battles Oh, this is how This is how I find my battles And this is how I find my battles. Oh, this is how I find my battles. 
And this is how I fight my battles. This is how we fight our battles, Lord. Oh, this is how we fight our battles, Lord. Oh, we give you the praise and the honor, Lord. Oh, we've come here to set the atmosphere. To set the atmosphere so the word can go forth. And speak directly to our heart. Oh, move us out of the way, oh Lord. Move us out of the way. So you can come and have your way. Oh, we worship you. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances, the things I could not understand. And many times in trials, the weakness blurs my vision. And that's when my frustration gets so out of hand. Oh, but it's then I am reminded that I've never been forsaken and I've never had to stand one test alone. That's when I look at all the victories. Oh, and the Spirit rises up in me and it's the root. the hill would not be hard to climb and he never offered our victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember when you're standing in that valley of decision and you're at the same Just hold on, cause my Lord, he'll show up, yes, and he will take you through the fire again, oh, cause he never promised that the cross would not get heavy, or the hill would not be Shield the flames again. Oh, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy. Help. 
surely perish. Oh, but if I trust the mighty hand of God, He'll shield those flames again.
even though the adversary is on every side you promised to take us through lord you said you would never leave us and you would never forsake us but you would be with us all the way through to the end lord we hold to the promise tonight God, I pray for those that are very near to letting go. And I'm asking you that you would let their grip be tightened tonight. Let their grip be tightened. Even though the adversary has pressed in hard, I pray, God, that you would show up at this hour. Show up at this hour, Lord, and give them grace and strength to hold on. Lord, I thank you. That's who you are. That's who you are, Lord. That's who you are. You are strength and you are comfort and you are help in the time of need. Oh, Jesus, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. those that are standing in the valley of decision even this moment and in their mind they don't know whether to turn left or right or keep going straight Lord their mind has even told them to quit and turn back but God I pray that right now you would show up as the mighty lion of Judah in their life And may there come a roar out of the inside of them. Lord, I pray that you would give them grace in this hour of decision to make the right choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift up your hands and let another hallelujah come out of your mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hmm. <laughs> Glory, glory, glory. (laughs) Hallelujah. My God don't make any bad days. (laughs) He doesn't make bad days. He only makes good days. The adversary may press in. But my God only makes good days. And I give my God, the God of the universe, the one who created everything that we see, I give him the praise tonight. As you find your way back to your seat, give him another shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. You may have your seats tonight. Sister Ashley, come and get ready to sing. We have had such a wonderful time this week. And every night, new ones are coming in. And we just want to thank you for coming to join us here in this camp meeting. Brother Dwayne and Sister Heather Jackson and Liam, we're so glad that you came to join us here this weekend. The Lord bless you. Brother Isaac Stoltzfus. You and more of your family come in today. We honor you and thank you for coming to be with us. Brother Levi Yoder, I'm glad the transmission didn't win. I'm glad that you all made it all the way. You and all that came with you from Holmes County, Ohio. You brothers there on the back row, we bless all of you in the name of the Lord. And we're so glad that you've come to be a part of this camp meeting Tell the tell it real quick. Hallelujah. Tell them what's happened. 
Praise Jesus. <laughs> we were on our way and we're probably like two and a half hours away or something on that line when uh, going down the street, the uh, front wheel hit the curb on the side because of it hit it, I guess. And so we got out of there and we kept moving. We're a little concerned about the wheel and the tire and so forth, but it seemed okay until maybe 15 to 30 minutes later, the lights blinked on the car and uh, Andy saw that the transmission went out. So we pulled to the side, and then uh, we didn't stop the engine. He discovered that he had a, had to, uh, he still had low gear, so we kept going down the road at probably 25 miles an hour for a while and started calling around to try to figure out how we can rent a car and all this stuff. And uh, Andy hasn't been driving very long. We're not very experienced with knowing what to do about these things. But we were praying, and we called the uh, brothers here, and they were praying, and then all of a sudden, Brother Chetty said, well, let's just pull off to the side here beside this semi-trailer, and we pulled in there, and then Chetty said, just stop that engine. We've been overrunning it for a while. Let's just let it cool down a little bit, and we were calling around to get a car rental, and then we decided where we were going to go and pulled out of there, and everything was completely healed and normal, and the car is fixed. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Disgraceful, distasteful, said about our praise that we're putting on a show. Well, just maybe you don't know, or you've never had the chance to hear just where we've been, to know where we came from. Because if you'd seen the chains I wore and how heavy they were, then you might understand why I had the way I do. If you'd been there when he found me, it would all make sense. When grace came to rescue me from my life of sin, I know what it feels like to be bound up in chains. So now I appreciate what freedom
Hallelujah. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may have your seats again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ashley. You wrote that, right? You wrote that? Yes. Amen. Inspiration. We're glad that the Lord is inspiring psalmists still in 2023. Hannah Kinzer, Naomi Kinzer, Mariah Shelley, Olivia Shelley, they tell me you have a song if you girls will come and be getting ready. We want to receive the uh, offering tonight. We want to give as giving unto the Lord. Uh, Brother Austin Hodges, would you come? Brother Austin Yantis, I'm going to ask these two brothers again to stand at the end of the aisle. If you have an offering that you would like to bring and give as giving unto the Lord uh, for the expenses of this camp meeting, would you do that? And may the Lord bless you for your giving. I would remind you that tomorrow the local body will be given our tithe and offering in the morning, and then we will receive a secondary offering as we have already announced for the for the mortgage, the principal on the mortgage that we have left of $26,521.12. We're looking for this to be gone, gone, gone by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that you would bless your people as they give to you tonight. All the sacrifices that they have made to be in this meeting and then they would bring an offering besides. I pray, Father, that you would certainly bless them abundantly. Get honor and glory from our giving and the remainder of this service. May you get the glory and the honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let's continue worshiping together.
My past is erased. My past is erased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. You may have your seat except for Brother Dwayne Jackson. We're so glad they're here this weekend. What an anointing that's in this house right now. Well, praise God, praise God. Go ahead, brother. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Just something about being in the presence of God. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. The song they're singing, talking about having to testify. I can't help but testify. I can't help but testify of what God's done for me. And I'll, I'll, try, I'll, I'll try to make it very quick. <laughs> yeah, but I know, but the word takes preeminence. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Many of you have, have seen, I'm sure, well, maybe some of you have seen the testimony that Heather gave on Facebook regarding little Mila, our little baby girl that's on the way. That's an entire miracle in and of itself that the doctor said would never happen. We don't listen to the report that the doctors give. My God gives a much better report than what the doctors could ever give. So God blessed us with this pregnancy and... As, as, the, as they do about midway through the pregnancy, about 20 weeks, they do an ultrasound to check on the baby's growth, make sure everything is, is growing right and doing right. We went into that ultrasound room with the expectation that everything was going to be perfect. And the lady that was doing all the checking, she just kept making good comments. Everything, oh, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good. So then we go into the office to speak to the doctor and he comes in and he's like um so uh did the technician say anything we're like oh yeah she just said everything everything looked really good he said oh yeah everything looks really good but i don't like hearing a doctor say but when they're reviewing something he says we didn't notice one little thing that she only has a two vessel umbilical cord and if you know anything about Life, how it grows, but they're supposed to be a three vessel. I wonder what it is about three. There should be three vessels for the cord, for the, for the correct, proper growth. And they said, well, we've checked, and we checked, checked all the things, and she only has two. And we want to just let you know that because she only has a two-vessel cord, here's a whole list of things that potentially could be, might be, possibly wrong when she's born. And you may need to make some decisions about that. I'm like, well, number one, there's no decision I need to make about anything. The baby's not born yet. And I said, and two, we're going to take it to the Lord in prayer. We're going to take it to God in prayer. I, I said, I appreciate all that you guys have done. Thank you for, for the work that you were able to do and what you can see. And we have... We have a picture where, of where they did the sonogram and they, the ultrasound, and they, they, they shows a two-vessel cord. They said, we're going to schedule you in a few weeks to go to a, um, a specialist that they can check even better than we can check. They can, and they, well, they were wanting to look to see if there's any abnormalities, things that would show uh, any signs of anything else. And uh, we know that place. Um, in our area, they're very well known for, they would just as soon talk to you about aborting a baby than they would of you bringing a baby to full term. So all that's in our mind already. I'm like, I, I really don't like that atmosphere. I don't want to talk to them, but we'll go. But we went to, our, went to the church first, and we prayed. Had our church pray. Put out a prayer request across Facebook and different, different places, and many people joined in prayer with us 
you guys even joined in prayer with us. So fast forward three and a half weeks from the, the first ultrasound. We go to Mayhek, and they go in, and the lady starts checking everything out, and she's doing all the checks, and she's like, oh, the, you know, the skull looks good, hands look good, feet look good, and we're like, we want to hear about the cord. That's what I want to hear. And so the lady, she's checking, 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 and she says, now your chart says that you're here because they saw a two-vessel cord. And we're like, correct, and we, here's the, here, we have the picture. They, the doctors have it, which we have a copy of it now. And she said, well, that's what's funny. She says, I don't see a two-vessel cord. There's clearly a three-vessel cord. That's my God. That's my God. People want to refer to a God that happened 2,000 years ago. It's the same God. It ain't a different God. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the need is that you have. You take it to him. You take him to his word where he has given you a promise. You hold on to the promise. You raise it up to him and say, Father, you told me that this is what I could have. By your stripes, Mila was healed. So we went back to the first doctor this past week. And Heather tells them, we have a little change since the last time we were here because the other specialist has declared Mila is perfect and that she has a three-vessel cord. And we're like, but our print shows, and they pulled it up back on the screen, pulled it up for her, and we, we pull a print out, but it shows here, and they're like, was well, there any way that we can get a copy of, of what they saw? I'm, sure. It's in, it's in the documents. You can get it. They're like, well, that's just amazing. We'll just have to look at that. I'm like, you can look at it all you want to because that's what my God does. The God that I serve is alive. He is well. He has not lost any of his power. The, the, I was coming across the, the road, and I was like, Lord, what, if they ask me to sing, what, what can I sing? What can I sing? What can I sing? I don't want to just sing a song. I'm not a, I'm not a person. I, I don't like, I'm not just for show. I, I, I like to sing something that has meaning and something. And, and the Lord, uh, I, was, <laughs> I was in McDonald's drive through I could have chose Chick-fil-A, but the line was too long. I didn't want to be late. So I was in McDonald's drive through And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I am the same God. I am the same God that spoke to the woman at the well. I'm the same God that stood with Moses whenever he stood on the banks of the Red Sea. The very, not a different God. The very same God. Now you may not know this song. I was asking Brother Benjamin, I sent, I sent the, the words over and he said, I don't know that we've sung that one, but. If somebody knows it, please join in. I don't like to sing by myself. I'll try it in the key of G. And it's, have you ever heard of the song? The same God. I don't have keys for it, but have you ever heard of that one? Maybe you can find it. I'll give you just a moment. I can talk about my God all day long. Yeah. <laughs> I love talking about his goodness. I love talking about what he's done for me, what he's done for my family. What he's done for you. What he's done for you. I don't know if she can find it or not. It's a song by the LaFontaines, or at least the LaFontaines sing the song. Just, just yeah, give me a key of G. And it's, it's simple. I look. I look back on history, I see the mighty God unveiled. 
keeps proving over and over that his word it never fails oh but i can keep on dwelling on some past memory cause he's the same god and he's living in We testify that he's the same God living inside of us. Oh, tabernacling inside of human flesh. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How great is our God. How great is his word. He's the greatest one that ever was heard. He rolled back the water of the mighty Red Sea. And he said, I will leave. Put your trust in me once again. How great is our God. How great is his word. He's the greatest one that ever was heard. He rolled back the water of the mighty rain. If you're able to stand, would you stand with us as our pastor, Brother Shelley, would come to minister tonight? How great is our God. How great is his word. He's the greatest one that ever was heard. He rolled back the wall. The mighty Red Sea, and he said, I'll be. And I'll keep waiting through deep waters. Lord, I'm trying to get home. Sometimes the waves dash so high. I think I'm almost gone, but when I think I'm gonna sink, I raise my head up high, and the big old hand of God comes down and takes a hold of mine. Sing with me. I'll keep waiting. God comes down and he takes a hold of mine. Is that your testimony tonight? Would you give him praise? Would you give him another praise? Hallelujah. 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 Today is my oldest daughter's birthday. I cannot believe that she now has a, a two as the first number in her age. She is 20 years old. 20 years old. That makes uh, mom and I at least 35. <laughs> Would you all wish Olivia Zion a happy birthday with me tonight? I love you, darling. She is not taken yet. And we're real picky. Some have come and they have gone. Any of you get ideas, you might be joining them. <laughs> See, we're waiting on the Lord. Yes, Amen. Amen. 
You know, I have, uh, 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 I'm so blessed. I, I, I want to just say tonight, I know you're standing. You won't have to stand too long, not near as long as I will. But I just, I've been kind of choked up all day. When I think about the goodness of God and, and the quality of this people, I am a blessed man. I am a blessed, blessed pastor. I have been granted by God some of the real cream of the crop. They have labored, they have sacrificed, they have spent their own grocery money, they have cooked, they have cleaned, they have put the sukkah up, they have played the music. I, I don't know, they have worked so hard for these meetings, and I just want to tell you from the bottom, my wife put a little note on there today. She said we ran out of water, and, and over 15 cases of water show up at one time. Yeah. She mentioned we're, we're having breakfast after the service tonight. She said we've had some extra people come in. Maybe you all could make an extra uh, breakfast casserole, and, and in 10 minutes... People are already posted. I'll make another one. I'll run to the store. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do the other. And I want you to know that we don't take it for granted. You people are, to me, the cream of the crop. And, and I'm never embarrassed when visitors come here. Because I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, they feel the love of Jesus Christ in you. And I know they see the light of the gospel shining in your faces. And I, and I want you to know I honor you. This, uh, they say that October is Pastor Appreciation Month, but uh, I want to say that we should make this October Congregation Appreciation Month because you people have excelled and exceeded a uh, time and time again, and I want to clap my hands for every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. These musicians have worked, worked all day and came to, to practice, to play. Anyway, I, I don't really have enough words to say but it is, to, of course, it is to God be the glory. Amen. Of course it is. But he needs men and women that he can work through. Uh, Brother Arnoldus and Sister Fiona, I want to say to you, you have really, really graced. With your presence, you have brought grace to this house. Thank you so much. I, I feel so humbled and so uh, extremely thankful that uh, I have. I didn't know. I didn't know. But I'm so thankful to have heard the testimony that I have had a small part in encouraging them and pushing them forward. It took them 20 years to make it here. Brother Jackson, I don't know if you know this or not, but he wasn't a speaker. We didn't, have, we didn't have him as a speaker. He just sent a note and said, I'm coming. I was praying the same morning, Lord, we need a third speaker. We need somebody else. And he sent an email and said, our lifelong dream is being fulfilled. We are coming to the camp meeting this year. And I went to the Lord and he gave us, haven't we been blessed these last two nights? My, my, my. Outstanding. And we know that you will take our love and our greetings to the Bride's Revival Ministry in, in Cape Town, near Cape Town, South Africa. Brother Greeley blessed us. He's going to bless us again tomorrow. We're so thankful. Let me tell you something. That is a faithful man. That is a faithful man. I love you.
We have the best musicians, the best worship leaders, the best cameramen, the best sound. We have the best. Let's thank God for them all. Thank you. That'll be good. And we have the best pastor. I don't know about that. Jesus, he's so good to us. He's so good to us. I want you to turn in your Bibles this evening. I uh, am here on assignment, and I want you to help me because I'm going to do a little teaching. Not being a teacher, then you're really out of, like Brother said last night, he was teaching, but really that was, I, I, I think there's got to be a word for that. That, th- that was teaching and a whole lot of preaching all r- combined. Seemed like I made up a word one time, but that was so many years ago I forgot it. But uh, I am going to give the devil a black eye. And uh, I want you to know before you hear this that uh, I am speaking to the believers that are gathered here, especially to the New Hope Revival Ministry people. Uh, If you're streaming this, I hope you will hear it and take it and uh, consult your pastor about it and uh, make sure that it is the order for your house. I am not responsible for any church or the conduct of the church except this one. I believe that we are not a part of a denomination. Uh, We are not a part of the voice of God, play, press, play, and obey movement. Uh, We are Bible believers, and we are so grateful and so thankful that God has sent a prophet to tie together the loose ends of all of the church ages. Um, We don't know how you can call individual churches message churches without somehow forming some kind of a denominational idea. So we don't really want to be a part of that. We honor Brother Branham with everything we've got, but we we try to honor him by living the kind of life he preached about, and we don't feel like we have to hang up his picture in here for you to remember who he is. We feel like that when we come here, we need to uh, focus and concentrate on the one that he came to help us fall in love with. The revelation, the unveiling, the revealing, the apocalypsis of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us are Pentecostal, not by denomination, but by birth, by experience. We're not ashamed of it. We're not ashamed of jumping, hooping, hollering, running, dancing, worshiping God. And if you didn't know why before uh, Ashley sung to you tonight, that's why. Because nobody knows like we know where God brought us from. Tonight I want to entitle this The Bride's Advantage, Her Secret Weapon, Praying in the Holy Ghost. John chapter 4 and verse 24, if you go there, it says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's a must, brother. It's a must. It's not an option. It's a necessity. Amen? Have you all seen my tie? Not a must. That's it, brother. In times like this, it's good to be fire baptized holiness and uh, get rid of the tie. I used to hear them preach, that's a rattlesnake around your neck. You ought to take that off. That's full of pride. You know what I said? Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be free. Hallelujah. 
God is a spirit, and they that worship him must, must worship him. The only kind of worship that he receives is the worship that is done in spirit and in truth. Do you believe that? One more place before you're seated. I'd like to read five verses in the book of Jude. I apologize for the raspiness of my voice. Verses 20 through 25. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Would you all read that phrase? Say it again, praying in the Holy Ghost. What kind of praying? In the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to prevent you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Did I mix up some verses or was that right? Good. Praise the Lord. In the Amplified, one verse. That's verse 20 in the Amplified. But you, beloved, build yourselves up. Huh? Build yourselves up. Founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice. Higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, does that sound bad to you? Does that sound like something negative that you would want to edify, that you would want to build yourself up by praying in the Holy Ghost? Does that sound like pride to you? Pride is when we have ambition. Pride is when we draw attention to ourselves. Pride is when we like to have our ego stroked. But there, are, there is a time, there is an hour, there is a moment when we need to build up ourselves. We're waiting on somebody to encourage us when we have the weapon in our arsenal right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's our key. That's the bride's advantage. That's one of her secret weapons. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, come tonight and help us in your word. I don't have strength or desire to drag anybody to an experience. I just want you to speak to your people this evening. I want to restore to them something that has been taken away from some of them. I want them to understand that you have given us the gift of praying in the Holy Ghost and that we should take advantage of it every opportunity that we get. It is to build up our faith it is to build up our courage. It is to take us to higher heights in the realm of the Spirit. And we need your help tonight to deliver this mandate. Strengthen your people, I pray. Let your servant get out of the way and accomplish your will. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And the saint said, Amen. you may be seated. Man is a spirit. Man is a spirit who has a soul. I know, I know, I don't have time. 
to ground that, to apologize for believing that. I don't have time for that tonight. But man is a spirit who has been given a soul, mind, will, and emotions. And he happens to live in a physical body. But he is first and foremost spirit because it took spirit to give him the living soul. The breath of God, the Ruach HaKodesh, the very life-giving spirit of Almighty God was breathed into a body of flesh and God gave him connection by his five senses to the environment around him. But not only does your body have five senses that lead to the mind and the will and the emotions, but even your spirit has been given senses that you might connect to the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Proverbs twenty twenty seven says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Do you believe that? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That word belly means the innermost being. It means the inner parts. It means the inside of the inside. It means your heart. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, he said, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. brother Branham said I I cannot preach anything other than what the first church age messenger preached if he preached it that way I have to also preach it that way do you believe that there wasn't a new message for Laodicea. There wasn't a new message for the last church age. It was actually the same message. It was the Tishbite anointing of weaving together all the loose ends of all the other six church ages. Brother Branham said that seventh angel, he doesn't have a message of his own. His job is to take everything back to the word. If you let this message fit in the word, you'll have a foundation to stand on. If you can't take it back to the word, you better leave it alone. Because the prophet told us that the word of God is the absolute. You don't ever hear him saying, like I said the other day. When I was preaching the other day, you know, I told you such and such and such. This is what a lot of us do. But he very seldomly quoted himself. What did he quote more than anything else? The word, the absolute, the Bible. So anything that we hear, we have to take it back to the Bible. Nothing else stands alone. Is anybody with me tonight? Don't get too nervous. We'll leave a few sacred cows uh, upright. We won't kick them all down tonight, but we're going to work on a few of them, all right? Because I'm pretty mad. You know, I don't get too mad too often, but I'm pretty mad at the devil because I believe that he has taken something away from you. Brother mentioned the song the other night, I'm going to the enemy's camp. Some of you, when you first got the Holy Ghost, you prayed in the Spirit, You'd start praying in English and all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord would start directing your prayer. And you started praying still in English, but prophetically inspired, led of the Holy Spirit prayers. How many of you know they're the most effectual? Those that are, that are spirit breathed. Sometimes we come up with a gimme gimme list. Sometimes we treat God like Santa Claus. We just say, here's what I want. This is my want list. But you start praying in the spirit. It doesn't have to always be in another language. But it's all right if it is. Anybody with me? 
I'm going to tell you something. I truly believe that if the bride of Jesus Christ would fight her way back to the privilege of praying in the Holy Ghost, I believe we could move more mountains than we've been moving these last few years. I think if we could get to the place where we're no longer afraid of spirit-led things, and even if it means a language that we never learned, but we started praying and the Spirit of God begins to give us a groaning or begins to give us a sound. I don't know how to explain it sometimes. Intercession takes on so many different uh, uh, aspects. And, and you come around here when the Spirit of God's moving, you'll hear all kinds of things. Oh, somebody said, oh. Somebody said, whoa. We had a brother come here years ago from South Africa. Uh, he came to the first camp meeting that we ever had. Story too long to tell, but he, you know what he'd do all the time? When the Spirit of God would move on him, he'd say, Show, brother. Show, sister. You know, we don't understand that sometimes. We scratch our heads and we look at other people funny when they worship a little differently than we do or when they respond to the Spirit of God a little different than we do. But I want to tell you something. It's time we find how to respond. Yours doesn't have to look like mine. Mine doesn't have to look like yours. But we better get in some Holy Ghost prayer meetings now where the Spirit of God begins to direct the priorities of prayer. The directives of prayer should not be flesh-led, not even soul-led. They should be led by the Spirit. Because the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I hope you can stand the rest of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 said, But he that is joined unto the Lord is now one Spirit. Woo! Your fallen spirit has now been redeemed when you have, re you know the new birth is not complete until the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Some people think they're saved because they've repented and they think that is being born again or they get a little sanctification working in their life. They call that the new birth. But we've been taught from the word and the message of the hour that the new birth is not complete until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then why are people knocking folks down to get up here and get the Holy Ghost? You've got to have it. They're still arguing over whether or not that you need the Holy Ghost uh, to, to get to heaven or to go into rapture. Brother, that's no question. There's no question there. You need him to go to Walmart. You need him to get behind the wheel of an automobile and meet all the demons behind the wheel. You need him. We need him. We've got to have him. And once we receive the Holy Ghost, he didn't just come to give us a feeling. He didn't just come to give us a goose bump or an emotion. He came to equip us to fight the fight greatest battle ever fought, which is a battle of the mind. And I'm here to tell you that I believe the best way to win that battle is to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's not a selfish prayer. When this, I know my voice sounds terrible. It's not a selfish prayer when the Holy Spirit is directing the prayer. I don't want you to throw out any option. It might be in English. It might be a sound. I long to hear the groanings. I'll give you the verses. I long to hear the groanings of the Spirit. I long to see the Holy Ghost falling like he fell on my grandmother my whole life and her lips would begin to murmur. Her lips would begin to tremble. With stammering lips, he said in Isaiah, with stammering lips in another tongue, I will speak to my people. This is the refreshing. This is the refreshing. Hallelujah, where with the weary shall find rest. 
Is that all right? And we need that. Isaiah 28, 11, and 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Huh? Could you help me? Yet they would not hear. You know, when we read that, we say, that's a Baptist. That's the Methodist. That's the denominations. Well, it was directed to the Jews. And guess what? The Jew is you. You're the Jew that it was directed to. It's one new man now. This will work for the bride of Christ. So let's not blame the other denominations who don't want anything to do with the Holy Ghost. Let's look within. Let's look at this house. Let's look at these other churches that are represented that claim to believe the fullness of this message. And you let somebody get a little stammering lip. And they want an interpreter before they ever say anything. The deacon sometime will go around and say, don't get to They sound like they're talking in some. Hello. I need a little help. Woo, my lips are dry. My tongue's dry. My mouth's dry. I need help. This, come on, Sister Flo, thank you. I long to see like my granny, the spirit of God would fall on her. I could tell her chin would be, neither one of us have a chin. You can't see mine. Well, it ain't there. But you know how terrible, how, how without one I am, if I didn't have whiskers, you'd see neither one of us had a chin. But she had, she had a little cuter one than me with a little, little dimple right there. And the Spirit of God would fall on her, and I'd watch that little chin begin to move like that. And the next thing you know, her lips would begin to quiver. And I knew that what was about to come out of her was a prayer that was going to shake the heavens and the earth. I knew that the Spirit of God was about to pray through my big mama. I knew that everything was going to be all right because Big Mama knew how to pray in the Holy Ghost. There was never any backsliding in her. I never saw her drawn back to the things of the world. You know why? She learned how to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you let God lead you to a spirit-inspired prayer in English or in another language, I'm telling you, you won't find yourself in the throes of despair. You will not find yourself in the throes of discouragement because you will constantly be building up your spirit. You'll be building up the inner man as the spirit of God, as the spirit of God flows through you. Today is the last day, the great day of the feast. Today is the day that marks Shemnizaret, which leads us to uh, Simchat Torah, the last day of the feast. And the Bible said on the last day, the great day, the last day of the feast, Jesus stood up. Brother Greeley mentioned it. That's why we hadn't said much more. He mentioned it the first night, that great water oblation ceremony that took place every day of Sukkot. All seven days. And then on the eighth day, that last day, they would go all the way down to the pool of Siloam, fill up those vessels, march up Zion's hill with a parade. By the way, according to the Talmud, there were banners being waved. There were torches being lit. Flags waving in the air. Shouts of praise and joy resounded in the tents of the righteous of the Lord. Woo! Because they were about to give God thanks. So that priest, they would come in a procession with these vessels. They would walk holy. They would walk in unison, holy unto the Lord, beautiful, beautiful pageantry. They would walk up through the Ophel. They would climb the southern steps of the Temple Mount. They would make their way up to the the platform where the temple sat. They would go in and pour that water on the foundation stone in total silence. 
All the rejoicing took place on the way up. But once they got there, it was total silence because something holy was about to take place. They're pouring the water of the pool of Siloam onto the foundation stone. They are giving God thanks. It's a thanksgiving offering for the former rain and the latter rain. There, was, there might not have even been any rain yet, but what they're doing is they're thanking God for rain as if rain had already come. How many of you know that's a good principle in your life? You don't wait until it floods. To thank God for the rain. You thank him in advance. You praise him in advance. How many of you have been praising him this week in advance? For some things that he hasn't yet finished. Some things that he has started, but he hasn't completed yet. But you're not waiting until it's all completed to praise. You're just praising him in advance. You're just letting the Holy Spirit have his way. So that last day, that last great day of the feast, when everyone is silent, Jesus just loved to interrupt religion. Everywhere he went, noise followed. It, It was really, it got to be like a carnival when Jesus passed through the town because everybody he touched, everybody he touched, Everybody he spoke to, they experienced joy like they had never known before. You tell me that this message has brought the fullness of the revelation of Jesus Christ and you can act starchier now than you did in Pentecost. Some of you baptized in titles. You had more victory over there in titles than you do over here in the name. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. You've let a preacher come along and tell you that because there's a fake tongue, you've read where Brother Branham mentions the false tongue, and we have gotten so paranoid, so afraid of the false tongue that we won't yield ourselves to the genuine. And I can hear the devil howling at us. Oh, but they say we're, but we're not in the lips anymore. Well, then preacher, sit down, shut up, because we've heard from your lips about all we can handle. I'm talking to myself. If God's through with lips, what's the preacher doing? And remember that the lips is in the same head that the intellect is in. I'm, I, you, some of you know where I'm at, don't you? You know the quotes. You know what I'm talking about. They say, we're, we're done with the lips. We're now in the intellect age. We now have a prophet who could read the minds and know by discernment the very thoughts of God. And so we don't need anything, any sign gifts. We don't need anything that comes out of the lips. And yet they preach and preach and preach and preach and preach out of their own intellect using their own lips while talking us out of our experience. It's going to be quiet in here. Somebody ought to bust through. Somebody ought to make up their mind that you ought to have more over here in the fullness of the truth than you had over there in some full gospel church somewhere. I see more moving of the Spirit sometimes in churches where they wear cargo shorts and ball caps. Somebody said, that's the false spirit. That's not what Brother Adam said. He didn't call it a false spirit. He said it rains on the just and the unjust. Hallelujah. And if the terrors have got enough sense to raise up their hand and say, thank God for the rain. Why doesn't the wheat? Where is the seed? Where is the seed? Hallelujah. If the weeds can praise him, why can't the wheat? We must. For they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. You don't substitute spirit 
for truth. You don't substitute a Holy Ghost for a sermon. You don't substitute Holy Ghost for a mystery revealed. Because without the Holy Ghost, no mystery could be revealed and no mystery revelation could be received. We need him. We need him. We need him. We need him. I'm not done. Oh, hallelujah. Skip, skip, skip. Mark, thank you, brother. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Is baptism important? It is. It is. He that, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I don't believe that water baptism is the regeneration necessary for salvation. But I do believe that your obedience is necessary. Does someone have to be baptized? No, but they should have a desire to obey. And once you have a desire to obey, there's water. What preventeth you from being baptized? So he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Elias, come get a microphone, will you? I know I gave it to you the other day and you didn't, and never used you, did I? And these signs, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, I was, uh, I was over there and I heard them talking about visions. And I don't want anything to do with people who, who follow signs. Somebody was up sharing their dream. I don't want anything to do with dreams because I don't believe that we ought to follow dreams. I don't believe we ought to follow visions. I don't believe we ought to follow. I don't either. I don't either. I'm not doing what I do because I had a vision. I had one, but I'm not doing what I do because I had a vision. I'm doing what I do because of what the Word said. And the Word said, if I will do what He calls me to do, these signs... These signs shall follow. That's, you know what? You're going to have a big crowd following you around because we heard last night that surely goodness and mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life. And now you are reminded that these signs shall follow them that believe. So where you go, don't be surprised if supernatural doesn't follow you. It won't just be goodness and mercy. The supernatural is going to go where you go. And it will if we pray in the Holy Ghost. You say, now, brother, isn't this ABCs? Yes. It, it almost blows my mind that the Spirit of God would call us in 2023 to preach something that every one of us should have learned in our Pentecostal church. It is a, way, it's a shame that we would have to take, yet the Spirit of God placed the burden of the Lord, the burden of his word on, and said, I want you just to go and lay out for the people the necessity. I'm not offering you an option of how to pray. I'm telling you the way the bride's got to pray. We've got to pray in the spirit. We're, we're not standing before Santa Claus. We're not standing before our mommies and our daddies. We're standing before the God of the universe. And the only language that he's honoring is the spirit language. It may be English. It may be ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. It may be ha ha ha. It may be skin of my knee. Come on. But if the Spirit is birthing it, if the Spirit is inspiring it, if the Spirit is drawing it out of you, you better obey the Lord. Yes. 
Well, don't you think there has to be an interpreter present for someone to speak in tongues? Absolutely not. I don't believe that for one second because I believe what the word said. There are diverse kinds of tongues. Every tongue doesn't come as the gift of tongues. If a tongue message is given as a gift of tongues, there needs to be a gift of an interpreter present. I got the scripture. And it says if, if, if the, somebody gives it, you know there's no interpreter. Pray. Pray that you receive the interpretation. But all tongues are not messages in tongues. Oh, you need a quote, don't you? I got it. Can you just preach in the word with me a few minutes? And we'll put the cherry on the cake by giving you the quote later. Would it offend anybody if we just preach out of the prophet's quote book tonight? Would it offend you if we just take it back to the word for a little while tonight? And then we'll come here at the end and tie it together with the message of the hour. <laughs> he that believeth in his... Are you mad? I'm not mad at anybody. Except the dumb devil. I know grannies. Every time I think of something like this, I see a sister. I, I see one particular one. Do you see one? Every time I think like this, I see, could I call the name? Would it be wrong to call the name? I see Sister Bell from Canada. And I remember the stories they told me about the move of God in her life in Pentecost how the Spirit of God would pray through her and speak through her. Come on now. What a power. Even being around her years later uh, after meeting her in the message and many, many, many others just like her, you could feel just in her presence, you could feel the Spirit of the Lord. But they tell me that, that, that in, in the early days of her Pentecostal experience, the Spirit of God would move through her and pray through her. She would give messages in tongues and they would be interpreted. And my, what a spirit, what a spirit. And I remember her standing before me one time and she said, Brother Shelley, would you pray that God would restore to me what I let the preachers take from me? Would you pray that God will forgive me? I was a poor steward over my Holy Ghost baptism. Would you pray that God will forgive me and restore to me so that I can get lost, so that in my kitchen I can get lost? I want to get lost in my kitchen in the Holy Ghost. My children are in trouble. My grandchildren are in trouble. I don't want to tell God how to do it. I want the Holy Ghost to pray through me. The mind of God. Are you with me? He that, okay. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Read it for me. I got to breathe. These signs shall follow them that believe. Go. In my name. In my name shall they cast out devils. What? They shall speak with new tongues. Oh, wait a minute. Everybody talks with their tongue. God wants to give you a new tongue. When he fills you with the Holy Ghost, he's going to clean up that tongue. You're not going to talk the way you used to talk. Huh? You're not going to use all the slang that the world uses. You're not going to cuss. You're not going to use euphemisms that mean cuss words. You're not going to call Jesus JC. You're going to be careful how you use the name of God. It's a hallowed name. When you say Jehovah or Yahweh or whatever you say, Hashem, which means the name, you're not going to say it in vain, in anger or for jesting. When you call on him, you're going to call on him with sincerity because he takes your old tongue and he gives you a new tongue. He might not only give you a new tongue to speak English, he might give you a new tongue to speak in other languages. I'm going to show you in a few minutes. We're supposed to be learning heaven's language while we're here. Don't you go out of here and murmur and talk about me. You come on now. 
If you want to challenge what I'm preaching tonight, go ahead and do it now. Let everybody see where you stand. Don't go out of here and criticize this. You need him, I need him, we need him. I want to pray, I'm going to pray in tongues when the Spirit of God gives me the utterance. If it hair lips the devil and bankrupts hell. If every church in this message goes berserk because they heard me pray in tongues, so be it. It's God's gift to me. It's God's gift to you. It'll make the knees of demons tremble. It'll cause principalities and powers to shake because a man of God or a woman of God has got on their knees and they didn't start telling God how to do it. They let the Spirit of the Lord lead them in English or in other languages. But it was Holy Ghost praying. It was praying in the Spirit. Somebody help that young lady and see what she needs, please. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. I, I just did. I just did that. The apostle Paul said, I withstood those beasts at Ephesus. He wasn't talking about lion, tigers, and bears. He wasn't singing Winnie Pooh's business, lions, tigers, and bears. He meant the kind that walk on two legs. The kind that have forked tongues instead of new tongues. The kind that delights somehow in taking the power gifts away from the bride of Jesus Christ. I know that's rough. I know that's rough. I know it's too rough for some. It's not how I want to deliver this tonight, but the truth is the truth. Somebody, somebody, somebody's. We've got to stand up in this hour and decide what's right. And we've got to practice it. Are you with me? These, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it didn't tell you to drink strychnine. It didn't tell you to pick up a rattlesnake. You know, a serpent's a twisty thing. He takes the word and twists it. He'll do it in your ear. He'll use your family to do it. He'll use your preacher to do it. He'll use the social media to do it. Amen. He'll twist. That's what a serpent does. But you shall take up. These sons shall follow them that believe. They won't be stopped by serpents. They won't be stopped by drinking any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands. On the sick. And guess what? Read it in the Amplified, Elias. Pop it up there. Verse 17, please. You still with me? Yes, sir. And these attesting signs. Attesting signs. Will accompany those who believe. Yes. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. Yeah, there you go. Languages that they've never learned. Other languages of the earth that they have never learned. And other languages of heaven and angels that they have never learned. Don't you tell me that because the fullness of the revelation of Jesus Christ has come, that the, that the church has lost her birth? We've got to have the Holy Ghost. We've got to have the Holy Ghost. We not only need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we need many refillings of the Holy Ghost. How many of you have got one this week? In the church age book, my. Sardisian church age. He said, yes, the spirit, you should have it. Yes, the spirit is not seven spirits. I'll wait on you. It's right after Mark 16, 17. The spirit is not seven spirits, but one. He will always be the same. What? And act the same. 
But this is the eagle age. I don't care what age it is. It could have been the buzzard age for all I know. But what I do know is the word of God and the prophet is telling us in many places, this just happened to be the easiest one for me to grab, that if the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of the Lord is present, he's going to act the same. And the seven messengers will have the same spirit and teach the same word and have the same power. If you make Brother Branham contradict the Apostle Paul, you're in false doctrine. I can't follow a message. I can't follow a message that contradicts the first church age messenger. He said, if I preach anything other than what he preached, I'm accursed. When he stood in, the, in that place beyond the curtain of time and he said, oh, these are, are these all Branham? These are your people. Are all these Branhams? No, these are your convert. He said, well, I could only preach what Paul preached. Doesn't it embarrass you when you listen to a preacher uh, who's preaching something contrary to what the apostle Paul preached? Doesn't it make you feel a little iffy about your faith? If they make Brother Branham preach something contradictory to the first church age messenger, they've lost the continuity of the scripture. And I can't embrace it. He's got to preach what Paul preached. I happen to believe he did. I happen to believe when they, when they preach otherwise, it's because they're lifting things out of context. It's because they believe that the message will stand alone. Maybe you're here tonight and you believe that the message will stand by itself. I'm not one of those. Just so you'll know, I believe it has to stand on the word. I believe that's what the prophet said. I believe you and I have to go to the Chinese laundry. I believe everything has to dovetail. Hear me? Hear me? Is that too rough? I believe it has to dovetail with the word. If you want God to bless it, it can't be contrary to the word. And if the church is the true church, it will have the very same spirit. Read. And word and acts of power that they had at Pentecost. Just a minute. I used to think that these preachers that had a reader thought they were something. Now I'm 55 and, and overweight and I have to get my breath. So he's here so I wipe sweat and breathe. Not because I think that, that I'm so important I need someone to read the Bible for me. Read, brother, read. This is a quote, read it. By experience, it will be a Pentecostal church. Stop, don't read any further. That's it. Let's go home. Do you need anything else? The bride church in the last days, she will be a Pentecostal church by experience. Not by dogma, not by creed, not by denomination, not by presbyter. District superintendents, we're not running a railroad, we're stewarding the church of Jesus Christ. We're not building a kingdom for man. We're seeing the kingdom of God restored in the earth through the fullness of his word. And when that church rises up, she's not going to be afraid to pray in the spirit. You'll see in a little while why it is so important. Because we talk way too much. We speak way too much English. We tell the devil everything. He don't have to be gifted in any way of knowing what you're thinking. He doesn't. He can't read your thoughts. He don't have to. You tell him everything that's wrong. Not only about yourself, but about everybody around you. He knows everybody's faults. He knows exactly how to go after everybody. Because we speak it out. What if we started praying in the spirit? What if we started letting the Spirit of the Lord direct our words in English and the next thing you know, heaven's language breaks through and you start talking like angels talk. 
I'll show you where the prophet tells us that English is not going to be the, the language of the new kingdom. We got to go, got to go, got to go. Read. What's wrong? Read. And there will be tongues and interpretation. There will be. No, don't read that. There will be. It doesn't say there will be. It says there will be. There will be tongues. There will be. What? Tongues. Not 12 inch ones that flap all the time. Holy tongues, yeah. new tongues, spirit tongues. We're not going to compare languages. When somebody first receives the Holy Ghost, and I want you to know, by the way, oh, I forgot, better run all the disclaimers. I don't have time for all the disclaimers, and I, I know that speaking in tongues is not the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. I also know Brother Branham said once you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues. He said the Pentecostals got the cart before the horse. He said we ought to preach you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and after you've received it, you'll speak in tongues. He said, I believe everybody will at some time or another Filled with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues. Oh, well, I did back in Pentecost. No, I don't believe that's what it's talking about. I believe by experience, read it right. By experience, it. By experience, it will be a no. Pentecostal no, church. No, 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 no. By experience, it will be a Pentecostal church. Aren't you a preacher in training? And there will be tongues. Will! And interpretations oh. and prophecy, prophecy and healings. And healings. Well, if there's no interpreter, then we're not going to know what's being said. That is exactly right. God wants to talk to the whole church sometime. But you know what the prophet said about tongues and interpretation? He said that becomes prophecy. Prophecy edifies the body. The whole body. Prophecy is to edify the whole body. But he said when tongues are interpreted, they become prophecy. Amen. I think some people are cold. Would you fix the air? Yeah. People look a little chilly. How in the world you could be chilly? Yeah. <laughs> Did you finish reading and interpret And prophecy. And now, prophecy. Now, 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 now. If we've had the last prophet, how could there be Prophecy. Because he told us there's a difference between a prophet and the gift of prophecy. But he also told us, Paul did. Now, I'm just, I'm just out on a limb now because Paul said it. That may not be good enough for some folks. But Paul said that in that fivefold ministry, those ascension gifts, there will be apostles, prophets, pastors. I heard Brother Brandon talking about the freaks. He said, they try to make God like that. He's not a three-fingered God. He's not a four-fingered God. Hello, anybody? He's a five-fingered God. His right hand's got five fingers. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. All five. They're here. They're in the body. They're in the body. They're in the body. And I tell you what, if they'll press play and obey, if that fivefold ministry in their own personal lives will press play and obey, they'll have a whole lot more to say once they get up here. I'm not against the tapes. We all need them. You better be listening to them at home. You better not be waiting to get to church to hear that word. We're feasting on that. So when I hear them talk about a false fivefold ministry, I agree with them. That's the one that don't care that could care less about what he said. There's something wrong with people like that. There's something wrong with people that come this close. God didn't bring you this close to the message of the hour. He didn't bring you this close to the revelation of Jesus Christ for you to go scampering back to your denominational junk. He brought you this close to the truth so you'd make a stand. I don't care if Brother Branham said nine when there were eight. I don't care if he said there were 15 when there were 10. 
These little carnal things don't matter to me and they're not going to matter to the bride. Because we're not here to make a man infallible. That's a Catholic spirit. Brother Bam said, this thing keeps going the way it is, this will be worse than the Catholic church. He preached that in his own house. I do too. Because you've organized with your religious jargon and where is the Holy Ghost in the people? I haven't had to preach like this in a long time. And it sounds wild. I, I'm, a, I've been ba- I'm sorry because my children lose friends when I preach like this. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They lose friends. The last youth camp they went to in the message, the last youth camp that they attended, they were told to their face what the people think about this church. They said, we get together before the service and decide what color flag we're going to fly. fly. Give me a flag. I'm just kidding. I don't know how to run that one. Give me one of Megan Kino's. I just need one, Megan. I don't need a dozen. Just one. Does that offend you? I've got more scriptures about flags and banners than I do dancing. When the king comes in, they always herald his coming. Well, I just don't understand it. You don't have to understand it. But you better not find yourself fighting against it. Because you may touch God Almighty. You may find Jesus on your hands. Some old boy. Tell my daughter. Uh, I, I, I can't pursue a relationship with you because of the worship, because of the way you all. I'm going to hope that he gets fully born again and baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire. I'm going to pray that he, regardless, regardless if I ever see him again, I'm going to pray that he prays in the Holy Ghost until everybody around him looks at him like he's lost his mind. Because that's what we need. And if you think I want for my daughter some stick in the mud who won't let God be God. I don't want that. We didn't play. Yes, I'm okay. I didn't fall. I'm not dying. I know my heart rate's over 100. Good, I'm burning calories. I'm burning calories. I can have a biscuit. Read. I've got to hurry. I'm on two. Page two. Read. God will be in the midst of her, and God will declare himself. Woo! Yeah! I can't help it. Declare himself. What? In the midst of her as he always has. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she will be unorganized. Don't forget that. Brother Branham said, sure, I believe you should speak with tongues. He said, I would that every member of my church spoke with tongues. I would like them to do that. I believe if you ask God, God will grant it to you. Does that sound like somebody that's trying to say that tongues are no longer for the hour that we're living in? We don't want false tongues. We don't want imitation tongue. We don't want counterfeit tongue. I don't want some painted face Jezebel praying over me in tongues. I know the devil can talk in tongues, but so can the Holy Ghost. We 
have emphasized the faults. We've called the attention to the counterfeit. When Brother Bram said the Pentecostal skies are full of the genuine. Look out there. Look yonder, bride. Look yonder, the Pentecostal. That was almost like another language. How many times these fiery Holy Ghost preachers will preach like that and they'll say, ah, I almost spoke in tongues. You would set your church free. If you just, instead of saying, oh, I almost, I'm so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I almost spoke in tongues. Why don't you just one time take a leap of faith? Silent on top of the temple mount. No one's, everybody's reverent. He's pouring the water. The priest is pouring the water over the foundation zone. Silence. And Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, screams out, busting religion all to pieces. And he says, whoever thirst, God, make me that kind. I want to be that one in the crowd. I want to be just like him. When everybody else thinks that everything has to be so sacred and sanctimonious. God, God bless us all. When everybody else is in some kind of form, I want to be the one that says, Who is thirsty among you? Who wants a drink of water? Hallelujah. He said, I will out of men's bellies. I tell you, I'm, oh, oh my. Adam means, you see it? We'll flow rivers. Fountains of living water. It's a first fruits. The whole, the whole water ablation is a, is a first fruits thing because they're praising God for what little rain has come and they're praising God in advance for the rain that will follow. We haven't seen the last of the latter rain. I'm telling you. I haven't. Have not. We have not. Somebody said, well, didn't Brother Brandon put us way beyond the, way beyond the latter rain? There may be some quotes that lean in that direction. And until you understand that you can't say the latter rain is over until you know that the teaching rain has took a hold. The teaching rain has to... It has to take a hold. Somebody's got to preach the teaching ring. Somebody's got to preach the revelation of Jesus Christ. Somebody's got to declare the message. And it's got to get in the hearts and minds of the believers. And then God's going to come and pour water on it. He's already poured some water on mine. Has he poured any water on yours? It's so bad. I'm not going to call names. I'm not going to point to people in this room. But it's so bad until the kids, the young people are so confused over whether or not they have the Holy Ghost. And when they ask the preacher sometime, this is what they tell me, this is what young people have told me, that when they ask the preacher sometime, they realize that even the preachers are confused about how do you know you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And sometimes it's like starting a lawnmower that won't start. You say, well, how do you know you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost? They don't know what to say. They stutter and stammer. They don't really know what to say. But let me tell you, the best way for someone to know whether or not they have the Holy Ghost is to experience him. And there's a young man in this house tonight that testified to me the other night that when he, they said, well, you'll know it, you'll know it, you'll know it. What do you mean I'll know it? This was his, his, what do you mean I know it? How am I going to know it? Is that fair? Oh, but guess what? When God opened up the heavens and baptized that young man with the Holy Ghost, guess what? He knew it. 
Isn't that right? He knew it. You can't grab a hold of a live wire and not know it. You can't sit under the breath of God. God will be in the midst of her. God will declare himself in the midst of her as he always says. Hallelujah. She will be unorganized. He said, I, I believe if you would ask God, God will grant it to you. But let me tell you, I know plenty of people that speak in tongues that hadn't got the Holy Ghost. So do I. So why don't I take the next two hours and preach on those quotes? Not tonight. Because he didn't call me up here tonight to preach on false tongues. I know where to send you if you want to hear that message. But he didn't call me here tonight to preach that one. He called me here tonight to remind you that there cannot be a counterfeit unless there's a genuine. You know what's going to set the Amish people free? Not by bringing them out of one creed and into another creed. That makes us twofold children of hell. That's not what's going to set them free. What's going to set them free is a real experience with the Holy Ghost to get out from under a bishop to get out from under a bishop this is we don't want none of that around here we can't afford to have any of that around here I'm afraid we won't be able to contain that you're right you can't contain fire once it gets out and you know what brother Bram said about wildfire don't you I'd rather have a little wildfire he said my God, sister, I feel the same way, brother. I'd rather think I had a little bit of wildfire than to die. My old granny said, if this ain't the fire, it'll do till the fire. They've cried out wildfire, wildfire, till they put out the fire. She said, just give me some fire. And if this ain't the real fire, it'll do me till the real fire gets here. We're so afraid of the false. We're so afraid of the counterfeit. We're so afraid of the imitation that we're not contending for the real. Oh, there's going to be a generation of young people raised up around this message. I don't know whether to say this or not. They're not forever. They're not forever going to be satisfied to go three times a year and come home to a dead, dry church. What they do now is they come home and for three or four weeks, the whole church gets stirred up. But it doesn't take long. Let somebody try to give a little message in tongues other than the pastor. I've noticed it's okay for the pastor to do it. I know this sounds critical. I, I, I would almost apologize had I not come here tonight on a mandate. How many, how, for how long, for how long do you think those young people are going to go to youth camps and dance around and worship God and be filled with the Spirit of the Lord and continue to go back and watch the deacon put out the fire? So afraid of disorder. Don't let anything get out of order. What you really mean is don't let it get too anointed. Because if it gets too anointed, you won't know what to do with it, folks. Yes. Well, I was in a church one time where they give message in tongues interpretation, and that woman went off into sin, and it wasn't, I did too, I was too. I saw all the faults. And yet I didn't see enough of the faults to convince me that somewhere there wasn't the real. In fact, in fact, if you get tired like I did of the faults, you get tired of the counterfeit, you go wild, zealous, passionate. Oh, they called me in. Brother, I'll point at you. I won't call your name because this is too rough for you name to be associated with it. I wouldn't do that to you, but you know who I'm talking to. Uh -huh. They called me and petted me on the head. 
Some of the camp meeting speakers now were just beginning back then. And they called me and patted me on the head. You'll settle down one day. You'll calm down. The word will settle you. The word will mature you. You're fiery now. I thought in the minute, I didn't know no better. And originally, I thought they were saying something nice. We can see by the Spirit that you will come to maturity. But that's not at all what they were saying. They were basically saying, hang around us long enough and you'll do it just like I do it because that's what makes us comfortable. Thank God for every genuine house out there where the fire's falling. Thank God for every genuine man of God that has taken a stand. Thank God for every preacher of this message that will get the Holy Ghost to his people. Don't you ever think that I think that this is the only place. Not for one second do I think that. Not for one second do I believe that. But it's one of the places. And all you have to do is look over the last year. And you'll find that prophecies that we gave 20 years ago and more are now coming to pass. People are now looking for a drink of water. They, they're tired of talking about it. They're tired of being told that you better be careful, you better be careful, you better be careful, you better be careful, you better be careful. Whoa, 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 better be careful. They are tired of being told if your hair stands up. Well, I'm not following my hair standing up on my arm, but I will tell you, I'll just be honest with you, there are times that the electrical power of God moves across the surface of my skin, and I do believe my, the hairs on my arm are standing at attention, but that's not how I know I have the Holy Ghost. Not because I feel it, not because I talk in tongues, not because I see visions, but I know it by the quickening. The Word said you'll know you're saved. By the quickening. the quickening of your spirit. You get an earthquake going on in your spirit. You're now one with the Lord, remember. You get an earthquake going on in your spirit. Your emotions, your mind, will, and emotions are going to shift because of that earthquake. And your physical body is going to register the Richter scale. And for you, it may just be your hands in the air and tears streaming down your face. Don't you ever feel pressured. But I will be honest with you and say, those of you who sit on your hands when worship is going on, I truly wonder whether or not you have ever genuinely experienced the Holy Ghost. I say that in love. Those who look terrified when the Spirit of God begins to move or it gets a little loud or the watch goes off and tells them you're sitting under 90 decibels. Mine tells me that multiple times in a service. You better get out of that loud uh, uh, noise or you're going to damage your ears. Uh -huh. Tells me that all the time. Yeah. People get so afraid. They're so nervous. Uh -huh. I see people here sometimes just sitting. You don't have to run. You don't have to jump. Yeah. You don't have to talk in tongues. Yeah. But surely you want that river yeah. to bubble up within you and begin to push its way out Little spring, little brook, why are you babbling so? Are you rejoicing because the little deers come and drink your water? Are you rejoicing, Brother Ben said, because the little birds come play around in your cool water? He said, if that brook could talk, it would say, no, there's something on the inside. <laughs> something on the inside that's bubbling out. It's forcing its way out. First Corinthians 12, 28 in the King James. Read it for me, please. We have to close. Well, we do. Because some of you will kid me at the table about how long-winded I am. <laughs> I 
This is the Holy Ghost in here. They're beginning to confess out loud. I am the man. Oh, this is revival. I am the man. I am the man. And God, read, and God. And God hath set some in the church. First. First apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, helps governments, governments, diversities of tongues. I thought all tongues were the same. I thought every tongue had to be interpreted. I thought like the Church of Christ, that the only kind of tongues that were allowed were allowed in the book of Acts, and that was only because they spoke in known languages. Well, this scripture just simply says, yes, there are teachers, yes, there are miracles, yes, there are gifts of healing, but there's also a diversity of tongues in the Holy Ghost Church. Sometimes they hear people speaking in their own language. Sometimes it's a t- another tongue of man that they never learned. It's happened. It's happened. Some of you can witness, Sister Weems can witness, that one night in the Tucson Tabernacle, the Holy Ghost came down. I called a woman out and prophesied over her in Spanish. She heard the Lord. She told me it happened in France, French. I, I just don't know me. I don't know if I ever told you this or not. But it just, it just remind, 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 that was me. That was me. That wasn't the spirit. I was preaching in French Canada one time and the Holy Ghost spoke over a woman and tongues came. They allowed it then in the message church. Nobody stopped me. You know why? Because people were being healed and delivered and set free and they thought we can correct that while he's gone. But while he's here, let's get some help. And, and the Holy Ghost spoke, and the woman heard it in French. And the interpreter began to say to her, Brother John Majors, began to interpret for her what I just said. And she said to him in French, I don't need you to tell me what he said. I heard him in perfect French. I can't even speak English. The Holy Ghost can talk in every language. <laughs> Diversity. Look, look at that in the Amplified. Read it quick. You're, you are holding me back. Read in a hurry. <laughs> so God has appointed some in the church for his own use. No, 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 no. For his own use. God did it. God put it in place. First, apostles, special messengers. That's right. Second, prophets, inspired preachers and expounders. Third, teachers, then wonder workers. Wonder workers. My God, bring on the wonder workers. Bring on the wonder workers. Let us see the works of Christ restored to the church. Read. Then those with the ability to heal the sick. Hello. Helpers. Helpers. Administrators. Whoa. (laughs) Helpers. You may not have the gift of miracles yet. But I want you to know God sees every biscuit even you who are going to heat them up instead of baking them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I'm asking, sweetheart, is one real genuine biscuit. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. I, I, please don't save me a butter me not. <laughs> I, 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 God sees your effort. Nobody. One person saw the no, we need water. I'm going to meet that need. That's the Holy Ghost flowing. You sisters, as tired as you are, you rushed out to the, to the grocery store this afternoon again. Don't you think that the Holy Spirit isn't using you as a helper? 
Some might say, well, that don't seem all that glorious. I'll tell you, it does to the ones that are hungry. Amen. Now read the rest. Administrators, speakers in different unknown tongues. Huh? Yeah. Amen. There are different kinds of tongues, both earthly and heavenly languages, known and unknown. Say amen. Amen. Earthly or known languages for evangelism and as a sign to the unbeliever. Flash up there. We're not going to read it, but flash up there, Acts 2, 5, and 6. And you will see that the last part of verse 6, you write that down, you note takers, Acts 2, 5, and 6. You will see, give me the 6, because that every man, look there at the end, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's right. You know, we may need some of that one day. This nation becomes so multicultural. We, we may be once again in a situation where we need somebody to raise up in tongues and it, and it be understood in Spanish. Don't put that out like we might not ever need that again. We've been on the mission field. Sometimes you need it on the mission field. I'll tell you something else has happened and I know it's happened to brother too. You're preaching somewhere, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God says, he's not saying what you're saying. It's happened to me more than once. And I said, hey, you didn't just say what I said. You said something else. And I've had people call out from the congregation, not preachers, by the way, people call out from the congregation when he'd start stammering around trying to explain himself in his language. I've had people call out and say, no, 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 no. Don't you deny it. I didn't know what he was saying, but the Holy Ghost did. It may happen to some of you young preachers. You're going to need that Holy Ghost. You're going to need to know, going to need these things. First Corinthians 14, 22, wherefore tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. So some tongues are for evangelism. Some tongues are for signs to the unbeliever. There are also heavenly language. Heavenly languages. Read 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Read it for me. Though I speak. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Got to have love. Got to have charity. Got to have perfect love. That's not how they preach it. That's not what I hear people saying so much. It's not tongues. It's not the interpretation of tongues. Not the gifts. It's love. It is love. Because if the gifts don't operate in love, they operate in the wrong spirit. Got to have love. But the kind of love that's being ministered to there, that's not the kind of love that says there are no more, the church is no longer a Pentecostal church by experience. What if I told you that I don't believe that this bride church is ever going to outgrow her Pentecostal birth? I believe when the rapture takes place, there's still going to be some among us yes, sir. that pray in the Holy Ghost. So which is it? They often like to say, well, when that which is perfect is come. Even Brother Branham struggled with the concept. He interpreted it three different ways. All three ways are good. I believe all three. I believe it is perfect love. I believe it is many things. I also believe that it's the perfect interpretation of the word. But I want you to know that is more rare. It's going to be, this is going to be rough. Put your seatbelt on. That's more rare among the message than people are willing to admit. Because if you're making the prophet say something that the word didn't say, that's not the right interpretation of the word. So we need some more of the revelation. We need God revealing to us by the Holy Spirit. When we sit under those tapes and we hear that word, we need the Holy Ghost to show us how we can place that in the Scripture. And then we can hang our souls over hell for this message. 
I'm not going to be in the shoes of those who say every word he spoke was thus saith the Lord. There's only one who every word he ever spoke was thus saith the Lord. Guess who that was? The Lord. The Lord. Everybody else is subject to like passions. Elijah the prophet, subject to like passions as we are. Brother Branham often saying, I make thousands of mistakes every day, which by the way is a mistake. Because I don't believe he made thousands of mistakes every day. I don't believe anybody made. It was an exaggeration. But he got the point across to some, and very few, very few refused to hear it. Oh, he didn't mean that. You've got to read between the lines. It's all thus saith the Lord. Which, I didn't mean to say this, but it's coming. Which, which is thus saith the Lord. When he preached that hell was eternal or when he preached that hell was not eternal. When he preached that the white horse rider was Jesus Christ or when he preached that it was the Antichrist. How's the little bride going to know? She's going to take both of those words. Is the white horse rider the Antichrist? Is he Christ? Christ or the Antichrist? Christ. Guess what she's going to do? She's going to take that to the word. And she's going to find out he's the Antichrist. And God revealed to Brother Branham in a powerful way. Showed him exactly who the was. He said, I, well, I thought it was Jesus. Come to find out it's the counterfeit. But it couldn't have been. Don't get mad. It couldn't have been thus saith the Lord. Both times. Or any of you preachers, don't, don't get loud, but just nod a little louder. Do you know my heart? Do you know my heart? I've made my stand. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels. That's diversities of tongues. In the message, God's provided way of dealing with sin. Read the, read the dark part. Uh, yellow, it's yellow here. Just read that. And Jesus, when he died, spoke in an unknown tongue. If the Son of God in flesh could hang on that cross and die speaking in tongues, if he left here speaking in tongues, he said the age is ushered in by prophetic. It'll go out the same way it came in. Amen. If our Lord died on the cross speaking in tongues, you're going to tell me that the bride will have to give all that up before she makes the rapture? That's a dirty, rotten lie. I'll go out of here talking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. In the message, questions and answers on Genesis, read the yellow. And I'm only doing that. It's all good. I'm only doing that for time. Hurry, because we got to hurry. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, can speak with other tongues through you. Whoa. Yeah. Yes, there's a counterfeit. Yes, there's a false tongue. Yes, there's Jezebels who talk in tongues and men running around with women that are not their wives. Double, triple, quadruple married preachers. Talking in tongues. But that's only one side of the coin. Guess what? If they can do it false, you can do it real. And how do we do it real? Read it again. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, can speak with other tongues through you. I don't mean we all come in here and just start talking in tongues as loud as we can. That would be chaos. I'm not, I'm not throwing away Bible order. I've never been interested. I am still not interested in the church order of Branham Tabernacle. Sorry, I don't mean no harm. They don't even meet together as a church. They don't believe the same thing they say. They say we believe church order. They don't even have church. They can't turn the lights off. They don't turn them on. Hello. Right. Are you just here to be critical tonight? No, I'm trying to tell you that there is a false. Yes. Oh. Come on. Come on. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, can speak with other tongues through you. What else can he do, brother? He can prophesy he through can, you. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, can prophesy through you. Yes. What else can he do? He can show visions through you. He can interpret unknown Are languages. Are you still reading? I am. Stop. <laughs> he 
He can show visions yes, he can. through you. Yeah. Anybody want to see a vision? Yeah. Read on. He can interpret unknown languages through you. Through you. He can interpret unknown. And guess what else? And guess what else he said? And guess what else he said? Y'all ain't supposed to be reading. He is. And all of that is part of him. All of that. The voice of God in the last days. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You noticed that the last one was 53. Put it back up. Let everybody see. <laughs> 53. But let me make sure you know that he said many glorious things after 63. Here's one of them, but this was before the seals, but that's okay. Right. What did he say? Voice of God in the last days, paragraph four. Uh, uh, uh. You can read all of it. Go ahead. But, you know, I've noticed that all the birds all sing in English. They do? Dogs bark in English. Babies cry in English. I wonder, what's the matter with us anyhow? What's the matter with us? But each one of us think that our languages will be the millennium language. You think everybody's going to be speaking English in the millennium. Go ahead, read. Of course. But we who have received the Holy Ghost. We who have received the Holy Ghost. That is true. Go ahead. That is true. Because we have a heavenly language. We have a heavenly language in the millennium. We're going to speak a language that is not of this earth. Faith is our victory, 58. Read the yellow, would you? Let's move, come on. (laughs) The thing you would be trying to do would be learn a few words of that language over there. That's right. As much to say. How do you know? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Anyhow. He's he's saying if you were going to a place, you would want to know a few words of the language of that place. You'd want to know, you'd want to say, hi, how do you do? All right. Yellow, read. And I think it would. And I think it would behoove behoove Christians That sounds kind of strong. Behoove. Come on. I would like to behoove you tonight. Read on. It would behoove Christians more today Yes, if they were trying to learn some heavenly language. Where in the world are you going to learn a heavenly language in the earth? You're only going to be able to learn it by the Spirit. Read. The praises of God. Folks are going to start leaving. That we're going to sing over there and enjoy. I'm going to eat your biscuit. Read. Start over. I was talking. Okay. <laughs> that we're going to sing over there and enjoy. Wait a minute. You're losing me. Go back. <laughs> it would behoove the, Christians. Thank you, brother. Okay. It would behoove Christians more today if they were trying to learn some heavenly language. The praises of the God. The praises of God. That we're going to sing. That we're going to sing over there and enjoy. And I heard this one doing that and that one doing the other. I heard little tongues in the church and no interpreter and on and on. Just go back and tell them that we are learning our millennial language. We're spending this. We're spending as much time in the spirit as we can. The prophet Isaiah, excuse me, the prophet Elisha, read that one. But there's one kingdom, read. 
But there's one kingdom that we believe that is coming soon. The Lord Jesus Christ to set up an everlasting kingdom and all nations of the world that saved will live in that kingdom. There will be one flag, one flag, one nation, one people <laughs> speaking one language. That's the heavenly language. Hey, yeah. Can you do a little better than that? Do I have a few more minutes? Yes, there are also different administrations of tongues. I'm not here preaching on tongues. You thought I was preaching on tongues. No, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I have a whole series. I'm going to preach on all the different kinds of tongues, which ones need to be interpreted and which ones don't. I'm going to do it all, but not tonight. I'm, I'm, pray, I'm talking tonight about praying in the Spirit, but I had to get a little bit out there. Would you read 1 Corinthians 12, 6 and 7 in the Amplified? If you need to stand to rest, you can. If you need to stretch your legs, you can, but come back. I'm going to take just a few more minutes. I can't leave it like this. No, no, no. no, sir. And there are distinctive varieties of operation. So stop trying to make it all the same thing. Yeah. All Amen. tongues are not the same. All administrations of tongues are not the same. Amen. Read on. Of working to accomplish things. There are different things that the Spirit is trying to accomplish. <laughs> And so there are different administrations and different operations. Go ahead. But it is the same God who inspires and energizes them all in all. Yeah. Go ahead. Read on. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. King James says diversities and operations. Let me give you one of the diversity of operation. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. This does not have to be interpreted. There's no scripture anywhere that says this kind of tongue has to be interpreted. Read it in King James. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought the scripture said a moment ago that tongues were a sign to the unbeliever. That would be speaking to men, right? Yeah, right? This one said tongues are not to be spoken to men. They're spoken to God. Why? Because it's a different kind of tongue with a different administration and operation of tongues. Hello. Yes, For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Yes. Mm. Be careful. We had a young man come here one time. He was trying to believe for the supernatural. He was trying to believe that God was moving in his bride. But he heard a message in tongues that lasted a full 30 seconds longer than the interpretation. And it blew his mind. Don't laugh at him because some of you have thought the same thing. The message in tongues lasts five minutes and the interpretation lasts two and a half. Couldn't be God. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Have you ever been out of Alabama? <laughs> Don't you know that in other languages, things can take longer to say? Or they can be shorter in their inter... Because some languages have fewer words. Are you kidding me? We have got that technical around the message that we're going to time the interpretation? Have you? This young man was very sincere. But I just explained to him just what I've explained to you. But here's another thing he said. He said, well, in the, in the message in tongues, there were certain phrases that were repeated. La, 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 la. La, 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 ta, 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 la, la, la. And he said, when the interpretation came, I was waiting to hear that phrase Repeat it. That's a logical thought. But remember, we're not talking about logical things here. We're talking about spiritual things. Spiritual things are not discerned by the intellect. They're discerned by the word. How many of you understand that Jesus could have said verily once? 
And it would have meant the same thing. It means truly. But he often said, truly, truly. Verily, verily. Sometimes a phrase may be repeated in another language. And it might even have, there are certain phrases in certain languages that can be, that you can use for English, for instance, English words. You can use one set of English words when it's said the first time and another set of English words to expound on what was said the first time. It's interpretation for crying out loud. It's not word for word. Is there any scripture that says it has to be tat for tat? Are you, do you think I'm going crazy here? Some of you all of a sudden started looking at me like you're just. This is about 20 years overdue. We need to take a little time. They're speaking mysteries. They're not talking to man. They're talking to God. Sometimes you go ahead and lay hands on somebody and they start talking in tongues. Hopefully not so loud that they've drawn all the attention of the house Onto themselves, because if they do, that would almost require an interpreter if there was an interpretation. But what if you just pray for them in a prayer line? Brother Dwayne, you've been uh, busy in a lot of those. Oh, I called their name. I'm so sorry. Brother, you know who you are. You've been involved in a lot of those prayer lines. Have you ever had any of those precious sisters? Have you ever seen them? Young godly women or young godly brothers come through there and they're being prayed for and they talk a little bit in tongues. La, 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 sha, 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 la, la, la. Was that all right? Did you, did you stop them in the line and say, wow, we need an interpretation? No, because you knew they were speaking something. You knew the Holy Ghost was saying something. You know what he was probably saying? I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. He was probably saying, I receive this blessing. I receive this blessing. I receive this blessing. Hallelujah. But it come out, ta, ta, ta. La, 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 la. Oh, I'm having fun doing that. No, I didn't need an interpretation. They were speaking something between them and God. And it might even been their destiny. They might have been declaring their own destiny to the devil. Speaking now. Howbeit he speaketh mysteries in the spirit. Read it in the Amplified. Hurry. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret, secret truths, truths and hidden things not obvious to understanding. To the understanding. It is bypassing his intellect. I wonder how many young godly men have walked across that stage and they were talking la 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 sha 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 making some little sound like that. And what they were really saying was God speaking through them. I'm going to give you a godly wife. I'm going to fill you with a, give you a virtuous woman. I'm going to give you children that will serve the Lord. They don't even know what they're saying. And the preacher would call for an interpreter. There, there is to be no, there doesn't have to be an interpreter when they're speaking mysteries in the spirit. How are we going to know that? We need some spiritual men. We need some spiritual leaders, some spiritual pastors that can call the critics and skeptics down and say, hold your peace. That doesn't need an interpretation. Am I past my limit, Benjamin? But there are tongues that need to be interpreted and there's a gifts of interpretation and you can read that now. 1 Corinthians 14, 4, hurry. He, oh. he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Okay. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Okay, that's not critical. That, that's not negative. No, no, sir. If the purpose of the Spirit, if the mind of the Spirit is to edify the church, if the will of the Spirit is to edify the church, it should be by tongues and interpretation, which then becomes prophecy, or it should be by prophetic utterance. Amen. 
But if the purpose of the Spirit, if the mind of the Spirit, if the will of the Spirit is to help that person build themselves up because they've been beat up, drug around, slapped, bruised, bloody, cutting, bleeding. I've got people in this church that, that literally, they, they walk up here like everything's all right. But if you could see them, you'd see they're bleeding, they're bloody, they're bruised, they're broken. Their lives are in a mess. They're suffering. But they come up anyway. You can't always know what's going on. So if they come up here to worship the Lord and you happen to be standing by one of them and one of them starts saying in a fairly calm way, not too loud, not to draw the attention of the whole church, but if you should hear one of those Soldiers of the cross get up here and get in the spirit, and the spirits start talking out of them. Sha sha sha, ha la la la. Don't you sit in the seat of the scornful? You have no idea how edified that person needs to be. That's not self edification. That's edification by the Spirit. That's not somebody trying to, to get pride or say, oh, look at me, look at me. That's somebody that's trying to keep their head above water. I'm telling you, if you'll start praying in tongues, if you'll start praying in the Spirit, if when you go home tonight, you'll pray in English until the Holy Spirit prays through you. Somebody said, I may, I may be up all night. You might need to be up all night until you can loose yourself. My granny taught me you needed my granny. Yeah. My granny taught me, she said, son, start in English, start with what you know. Start with what you know about the need. But don't ever stop praying. She told me that from the time I was seven years old. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues at the age of seven. I spoke in tongues all night. The next, you don't have to, you don't have to, to get it, but once you get it, you will. That's what he said. Uh, I spoke in tongues all night. I lay on a twin bed beside my back, said, Granddaddy. He woke up the next morning and said, Mildred, I've never seen anybody got as much of the Holy Ghost as that boy has got. He has talked in tongues all night long. I hadn't got a wink of sleep. <laughs> I woke up and went to the breakfast table, and Mama said, Big Mama said, You want milk or juice? And I went, Yah, 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 da, ba, ha, da, ba. Yeah. Somebody said, well, you're offending me by the way you're using those syllables. That's all they are. If the Spirit isn't saying them, that's all they are is syllables. I don't encourage everybody to start going around doing that to one another and saying things like that. I'm using that, but I don't feel in any way like I'm in trouble. Because if I'm just using it as a syllable, that's all it is. La, la, la. But you let the Holy Ghost be in that. And you don't know what you're saying. You may be saying, my, me and my wife are going to have 12 children. And then your wife's going to call that a false tongue. <laughs> Anna Christine, help me. If Austin starts talking them mysteries, you go shut him down. I know. <laughs> he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. That word means edify and amplify. It means edifies and improves himself, builds himself up. Yeah. Prophecy builds up the whole congregation. And that's why I read you 20, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to break through and pray in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it's not, it doesn't even seem to be a language at all. I'm going to close with this. Romans 8, 26, 27. Likewise, the Spirit also Helpeth our infirmities. Read for me, would you? I got to breathe. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession. Intercession. For us with groanings. Groanings. Which cannot be uttered. By the way, that word uttered there doesn't just mean sound. It means understanding. Mm -hmm. There are certain groanings in the Spirit. Oh! Yeah. I'm just showing you a groan. Although I felt a little something in that one, I'll tell you. 
<laughs> no syllables. No seeming language. Just a guttural groan. Oh. I was standing by that man and he was growling like a bear. Call that the spirit. You better be careful. It just gets all over me when they start groaning and moaning if they're praying for one another. No, no, it don't. Because if it got on you like you said it did, you'd be groaning and moaning too when the Spirit of the Lord fell on you. You don't have to understand it. Just get out of its way. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. This is what's so wonderful about praying in the Holy Ghost. When you're praying in the Spirit. Granny said, pray in English, pray what you know, pray what you know about the situation until the Holy Ghost comes. And when the Holy Ghost comes, let him pray. And it might sound like a language, it might sound like a groan, it might sound like a moan, it might be, oh! It might be, hey! But guess what? The Spirit of God knows exactly what the mind of God is. You are safer praying in the Spirit than you are praying in the natural. And, and, and therefore, therefore, you're safer. I'm going to say this. I might as well. You're safer praying in tongues. Many times I've walked over a deathbed. And you don't know whether to pray God raise them up. God, come get them now. You don't always know the mind of God. But if you're not ashamed, if you yield yourself, the Spirit of God might just pray through you. And when you get through, you can walk out of there knowing that whatever was said went straight to the throne. Amen. I got to hurry, got to hurry, got to hurry. Can I come back and finish this another time and do some more with this? I'm skipping, 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 skipping. This is the last. Well, I, 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 uh, I got two things. Go ahead. Just remind, I, I, just, I know some of you won't, you won't hear the second part. So 1 Corinthians 14, 13 through 20, write that down. Because I want you to know that I know that there is a benefit to praying in the Spirit and with understanding. Love it. The Bible said sing in the Spirit and sing with understanding. That's real powerful. When you start groaning in the spirit or praying in another language and God lets you know what you're praying. Woo! You might shock yourself. If God lets you know what the Holy Ghost is praying through you, it might blow your mind. You might say, if I would have known that I was praying that, I don't even think I had the faith to believe that God could do such a thing that the spirit was praying. Maybe God takes you out of your own mind sometime, prays through you in the spirit and then lets you know what you pray with understanding. So you say, whoa, I didn't even know I had the faith to believe such a thing. Does that sound reasonable to anybody? I know it's late. So I want to go over that with you another time. But here's what I wanted to show you. This is questions and answers. If I promise you this will be the last, will you listen? How many of you give me your undivided attention if I promise you? I don't know, Pastor. you You've stretched it a little time or two when you pray. <laughs> Paragraph 89. Go to the uh, highlighted part, would you? Read this, Elias. It's a lot of reading, but I want you to get it through. Everybody listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get it out. Wherever you're in prayer. Wherever you're in prayer. At your home. At. Oh, he's never going to get through with me stopping him. I know, but I want you to hear this. At your home or. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Speak then. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wherever you are. What if you're around the altar and somebody hears you? <gasps> Give them something to talk about. I don't mean out loud that you're going to take the whole attention of the whole service. You shouldn't do that. Unless you know you're going to be able to tell us what you're saying. Because what, how do the rest of us get blessed by that? But if you happen to be up here in the 
Spirit of God moves on you, Brother Greeley lays hands on you, and you start thanking God in English, and the next thing you know, shoo, 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 something else comes out. We don't believe in teaching people to speak in tongues. I saw them do that in Pentecost. Yes, I saw them hold up their tie and say, see my tie, tie my tie. You say that over and over again. Do you? And, and finally, they'd say it so many times, they start stumbling around, and the old sisters would start saying, she's got it, she's got it. got a twisted tongue, but that's not necessarily the Holy Ghost. Read on. Wherever you are, wherever you are, speak then. Wherever you're in prayer, at your house, at your home, or wherever you are, speak then. Because he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Brother Bram didn't seem to have a problem with you being edified. It gives him consolation. Gives him Anybody ever need any consolation? Oh, yeah. Hello. Go ahead. He feels good. Yep. Because he That is... ought to be outlawed. <laughs> Christian people ought not to feel good. I think some people think that's the way it is. You, you, you're tired now. You can go help me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because he is standing there praying, and the first thing you know... The Holy Spirit come upon he. First thing you know. Or she. And they begin oh, to speak. Oh, 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 let's get that one in. In tongues. Whoa, whoa, stop. <laughs> Women can. Yeah. Yeah. Your prophet said a sister has every right to every spiritual gift except handling the word. Well, we all know that women are the weaker vessel. Right. I agree. Right. They ought to talk in tongues more than the men. <laughs> They're so weak, they ought to be edifying, building yeah. themselves up. Come on. Read, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and their soul was rejoicing and happy. Because they spoke in tongues. Is that such a shame? I think it sounds wonderful. Read on. Why that was, wasn't just a sign that God wasn't going to answer. Wait a minute. I think you're, you're, you're going to have to read that more carefully. Get the right words. Why that was, was that was, that's wasn't. not really why, son. That's not really why. It's why. You know, when you're talking, you say, why? I understand you're not a southerner. <laughs> Let me interpret Brother Bram's tongues for you. That's, why? Why? That wasn't just a sign that God was going to answer the prayer that you was praying for, but read. It was a sign that the Holy Spirit hearing you. Whoa, stop. Stop right there. Here you started praying in English, and the Holy Spirit started praying for you, through you, for you. That was not just a sign mm -hmm. that God was going to answer your prayer. That's one of the things it was. Yes, sir. Boy, if I say that, they'll all start talking in tongues right now. Wow. It was a sign that God was going to answer your prayer. But look what else it was. It's a sign that the Holy Spirit's hearing you. Yeah. He knows you. Read. He's with you. He's with you. Amen. That's the same thing I would apply to this. The Holy Spirit giving you a blessing. What's wrong with that? Shouldn't the bride be blessed? Shouldn't all things be done in decency and order? Yes. But shouldn't the bride be blessed? Sounds to me like it's a blessing to pray in the Spirit. Sounds like it's a blessing to pray in the Holy Ghost. Seem like you're praying the will of God when you pray in the Holy Ghost. All right, now it's going to take you a while to read this, so you better start. Here some time ago... The last time I spoke with tongues. Wait a minute. <laughs> my prophet, my prophet didn't speak in tongues. So, well, why would I need to do such a thing as that? Well, he may not have spoken in tongues as often as some. But he did. And then if you want to know how that compares to the first church age messenger, 
Paul said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than all of you. You just keep on murmuring. I, I have a feeling he was just almost daring them. Just keep you murmuring up. I'm going to talk in tongues more than that. I've had to do it. I sat in the camp meeting up the road there many years ago. And I heard a preacher in the message talk about a Malachi 4, 5, and 6 birth. And I searched my Bible sitting there in that big crowd of believers. And I read Matthew 4, 5, and 6 over and over again. I didn't see anything in there about a birth. Said that spirit of Elijah would turn the hearts. I, I got all that. I realized in a few minutes that that man was preaching that you need the new birth and then you need a Malachi 4, 5, and 6 birth. I don't even know what that is. If you do, maybe you can help me. But if the Bible new birth is not enough to birth you from above, you got a problem. So I went up to him after the service, and I went up to the pastor who was in charge of the big camp meeting, who I happen to know spoke in tongues. And I pulled him to the side, and I said, can you please explain to me, brother, what a Malachi 4, well, you know, having your eyes open to see the message, blah, 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 blah. I said, look, that's, you're preaching something that's not even in the Word. That's not even in the Bible. You're telling people they need a new birth, they need the Holy Ghost plus. They need a revelation of who God is, plus they need a revelation of who the prophet is. One revelation will lead you to the next revelation. You don't have to separate the experiences. And you know what he said to me? Honest before God. He said, <coughs> well, Brother Shirley, I, I hear that on occasion you're uh, getting excited in the pulpit and you speak a little bit in tongues. What has that got to do with Malachi 4, 5, and 6 birth? I challenged him, so he challenged me. And I said, brother, I, I have been guilty. And I said, I hope you'll pray for me. That I can speak in tongues more than you all. Because Paul did. Hmm? You've done a lot of talking tonight about speaking in tongues. I want you to think about the last 20 years of your experience in the message. And I want you to tell me how many messages you've heard on the genuine gift of tongues or the genuine gift of praying in the Spirit. I want you to think of how many you have. And then when, when we can compare this three hours tonight with the 20-year absence then you can tell me I've overstepped my bounds this evening. I doubt most of you have ever heard a sermon. You may have heard excerpts in sermons, but I doubt any of you have. That's the reason why I felt like the Spirit of the Lord was pressing me tonight, and I hope that it will be a contagious fire. And I hope men of God all over this nation and world will begin to show the people there couldn't even be a phony. If there wasn't a genuine, read on. The last time I spoke in tongues, as I can remember, was it's a bit about three or four years it's ago. It's been about three or four years ago. Now, do you think that means that you're supposed to wait? <laughs> that was Brother Branham giving his testimony. That doesn't have to be your testimony. I'm going to tell you a secret. I pray in tongues every day of my life. I have, for the last 48 years, never gone to bed. I'm, I know it sounds boasting, but I have never gone to bed in these 48 years without knowing that sometime during the day I prayed in English until the Holy Ghost took over and prayed through me. It may be the reason why I'm still here tonight. It may be the reason why I'm still preaching here tonight. Because he has strengthened me and sustained me 
and encouraged me when there was nobody else. You've been there. You've been there. You've been there. When there was nobody to give you an encouraging word, but the Holy Ghost would fall on you and you'd feel that of Ochiakaya. What you feel, Brother Shelley? I feel strength coming into my body. It's not about what you feel. What did you just feel? I just felt strength and virtue and consolation coming into my body. That's how he's kept us. I'm closed. Musicians coming. I would have never known to do such a thing. I would have never known to pray in English until the Holy Ghost prayed had it not been for my old granny. They used to try to tell me my granny didn't have the Holy Ghost because she was a woman preacher. I said, you may not have it. But she had the Holy Ghost and when the truth struck her heart and I challenged her own preaching, she said, I'll never do it again. Now you tell me whether she had the Holy Ghost or not. You didn't even know her, and you tell me whether she had it or not. When the Spirit of ooh, when the Spirit, when He the Spirit comes, He will lead you and guide you and direct you. I've been seeing something. Don't strike this probably from the tape. But I've been seeing something going around on social media about how the Spirit of God was falling years ago and men of God, men of God would just kind of lift off the floor while they were preaching. We need some of that wonder working. We may never see that again. May never. But you be careful how you criticize it. There was a whole church in Jellicoe, Tennessee that fell under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The church was called Church of God of the Mountain Assembly and everybody in the church had long uncut beards. They were not Amish, but it was a tradition in that church and the Holy Ghost would come in not one, but many. There were times that the Spirit of the Lord would fill that room with a blue cloud and there were many people who were seen standing off the floor as the Holy Ghost came in a cloud and lifted them up. Now, now, now. I don't believe in such things as that. Good, good. You'll never experience it. You'll never have to worry about it. You don't have to lift off the ground. I'm not saying something silly like that. No, you don't have to do that. Your inner man's lifted when that Holy Ghost comes on you. But don't you limit God. This ain't thing ain't over. The showdown, the showdown on Mount Zion's coming. Somebody said, what about a Mount Carmel showdown? We're passing that fast. He said, there's one coming on Mount Zion. And that's going to show the mature sons. Only the mature sons are going to pass that one. You and I better be working toward maturity in this hour. Read. I don't hear you. I was in Illinois, and Billy come after me for to go to a, the prayer line up at Zion City. That's right, read. And I was burdened on my heart. Brother Branham burdened on his heart. Knelt and down, I knelt down started and to started pray. to pray. Mm -hmm. And while I was praying, I heard Billy come up and knock at the door. And I said, Billy, I can't go now. Have you ever felt that? Have they ever come for you, but you wasn't ready to go yet because the burden of prayer had struck your heart so heavy? I have. Some of you have. Go. Yeah. And he went out there and sat down. And I was praying. My heart so burdened. I couldn't go to church like that. Read on. And see, usually sometimes he gives me visions, show me some things going to happen, but he didn't do it then. Right. 
And you don't have to be a prophet to see a vision, just so you know. Read on. And I was just praying away in the room there, and I heard someone talking. I quit praying. I listened, and there's somebody at the door. Mm -hmm. There was, sounded like a foreign language. Sounded like a foreign language. Like German. Like or, German or low Dutch. Or something. It was so fast, chattery. I listened again, and I thought, well, somebody's come up there talking to that motel man in German. He didn't recognize where this language was coming from. He thought a man had come up there talking to the, to the caretaker of the motel in the German language. Well, somebody's come up there talking to that motel man in German. Maybe he'll answer him back. Go on. And I just quit praying, leaning over a chair like leaning this. Leaning over a chair like this. Listening. Listening. And he just kept on talking. I thought, well, wonder why there's somebody don't answer back. And I listened. I thought, well, now, isn't that strange? Nobody's answering him back. There was a weight scales down, down the, road. the road. And I heard that fellow down there hollering, drive off. You know? You could hear it in the natural. And drive on. I turned around, looked out that way, and I did. I felt my mouth come I to find out. I felt my mouth. You know, that's how I received the Holy Ghost. Wow. That language was coming out of me, and I focused on the language and missed it. Finally, put my fingers to my mouth and realized it was coming out of me all along. Brother Branham said, I felt my mouth come to find out. How was the one doing the talking? That, that low Dutch or German sounding language that he was hearing was coming out of his own mouth. Yeah. Read on. It was, it was me. me. And I just kept real still, not knowing not one thing. I had no more control. Wait a minute. I had no more control of what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Read. Then nothing. Note not one thing I was saying. Not a thing. Didn't understand what he was saying. Where was the interpreter? Yeah. Yep. Come on. Come on. It was coming. Yeah. It was coming later that night. Read. I just, my mouth was moving. Mouth was moving. I was speaking some kind of a language. I just held real still. What kind of Pentecostal prophet have we got? Read on. After a while it quits, and when it quits, oh my, I felt like I could scream out. I was just so happy. So happy after praying in German or I, low Dutch or, or, or who knows what he was praying in. Yeah. I don't know why, but the burden all left me. You know why? Because the prayer had touched the throne. Oh my God, that's good. So I went on to the church then, called Billy, and when I got to the church, Mr. Baxter then was the manager of the that's meeting. That's Ern Baxter. And he was a, He's been, been singing, singing waiting. waiting. I was over a half hour late. Well, sir. Yeah. And I told him that I was just late. He, he seen I'd been weeping, and he said, what's the matter? We don't. And I said, nothing. And I went on, and just about 10 minutes, a woman come in at the back of the auditorium. Here come a woman. And she was about to take the place back there. And when we checked up with the woman to find out, she was on her road from Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis, somewhere one of those cities. The, she was so bad with TB, the ambulance would not dare to bring her. Her lungs were in such a condition. Hear this, just jail. Just jail. Read on. And so a couple of brethren got an old Chevrolet car and took the car seats out and fixed her a cot in there some way or bed and laid her on it and was bringing her to the meeting. She wanted to come. The doctors had to give her up. And on the road over, they told her the last little bump, she'll go into a hemorrhage. And that's it. And she went into a hemorrhage. And they had taken her out and laid her on a grass flat. Come on. And the saints were standing there praying over the woman. And she was just, every time she breathed, it's just gurgling. The blood would blow out of her mouth like that. And all of a sudden. Right. You read it right. <laughs> all of a sudden, she was. She was instantly healed. And she jumped up from there and started rejoicing. Remember, Brother Branham didn't lay hands on her. Remember, she didn't come through the prayer line. The Holy Ghost had already prayed for her. 
come on to the church. And there was, and there she was back there testifying back in the back. Now, let go back to that real quick. What did she do? She jumped up from there. Started rejoicing. She come to church healed. Read on. I said, what time was that? And when she gave the time of what time it was, it was the very same time that the speaking was going through me. Well, what was it? It was the Holy Spirit making intercession for that woman there. See what I mean? Now, the Bible says that sometimes we whoa, whoa. muttered words. Mutter words. Just muttering. Read on. They're getting their patience is thin, I feel it. Read on. We don't know. You can't see through me? <laughs> we don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. But it's the Holy Spirit in there moving out, making intercession for those things. We don't know what we're talking about when the Holy Ghost is praying through us, but it's the Holy Spirit in there moving out, making intercession for things that we do not understand. And the woman was instantly healed. He heard from her from a long time. We heard from from her for a long time from there. Perfectly well. God, all right. Now you see, God knows where those things are, and he he has a way of doing it. He has his own way of doing it. Right. Yeah. What's he say? We must. We must just submit ourselves to what he does. Yeah. Can, can the church say amen? amen? The last sentence, the last phrase. We can also pray in the Spirit That's with from my notes. understanding. That's from my notes. Here's the last phrase I want to make. You heard Brother Greeley last night blow the shofar. Do you know that's God's voice? Did you know the Jewish people believe that when that shofar sounds, God's voice is in the shofar? Did you know they also believe that when they sound the shofar, it's the voice of the people responding to God? I will, I will, I will obey. I'll go. Did you know the Jewish people believe that when that shofar sounds, it confuses the demons of hell and the devil is confused when that sounds and the demons run away? Did you know that? Did anybody know that about the shofar? No, no interpretation. Did you know that's one of the benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost? Yes. The devil doesn't know what's being said. Yes, sir. The last quote, put it up. The last one, the last one, the last of the notes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, grandma was slow. <laughs> what, did you turn it off when I said I'm done? Big mistake. You've got a song ready, right? Seventh seal. And in Sabino Canyon, he said, This is the third pool. I'm going to read this one. (laughs) (laughs) And there's three great things that goes with it. Yeah. One unfolded today or yesterday. The other one unfolded today. And there's one thing. Listen, preachers. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Don't you brothers be, you that are here, please take my advice. Don't be getting up there telling the people that you know everything about the third pool and you know everything about the seventh seal. Right. Because you're going to make yourself somebody you're not. Here's what the prophet said. The other one unfolded today. And there's one thing that I cannot interpret. Because it's an unknown language. Amen. But I stand right there and look right straight at it. And this is the third pull coming up. And Brother Branham knocks on the pulpit three times. And the Holy Spirit of God, oh my. 
if you don't think he's talking about the seventh seal, he's preaching the seventh seal. But if you don't think he's talking about the seventh seal, he wants to remind you he's talking about the seventh seal. Oh, my. That's the reason all heaven was silent. The third part of the third pool has something to do with the 30 minutes of silence before the throne. I don't know what it is. But there's a connection. So every time you hear preachers say, We've got, we know it all. We know all about it. We know all about it. We know everything about the seventh seal because it's in the message. Brother Bram said so. Brother Bram said we know it all. He may have said that. He may have made, made reference to that. But when he was preaching the seventh seal, that's when the angel was supposed to be with him. That's right. When he was preaching this, I got one, one come to, this other one came, but he said that third, that I could not make it out. It was in an unknown tongue. Mm. He said in the Holy Spirit, oh my, that's the reason all heaven was silent. Is that all or a little more? Now, I better stop right here, see? I just feel checked not to say no more about it. When you tell me you know it all, when you get up and preach, that we know everything there is to know about the seventh seal. And when you get up and preach that we know everything there is to know about the seven thunders, you're missing one huge important piece of the pie. So just remember, the seventh seal, the reason it was not open. But I heard Brother Branham say many times, it was open. Seven seals, seven seals. Sometimes he said six, sometimes it's the seven. I heard Brother Branham say many times that that seven seal was open. Well, here you hear him saying that there was one part of that seventh seal that he did not know what it meant. It went by him in a... Thank you. He said, see the reason it did not reveal it? No one. Please forgive me, top ten preachers. No one. No one should know about it. When God wants to send a secret that he don't want nobody to know about, when the Spirit of God wants to pray through you and he don't even want the devil to know what you're saying, he'll do it in an unknown tongue. The reason that the third part of the seventh seal was not revealed, the reason why there was 30 minutes of silence in heaven is because it was not to be known. You'll hear Brother Branham saying in another play, the devil could do great damage. If you got a hold of this, is that all the quote? Let's stand. We need to pray in the Holy Ghost. We need to pray in the Holy Ghost. You can't manufacture it. But I want to know how many of you know you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm waiting on you. How many of you know you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? You may not have the gift of tongues or the gift of interpretation, but how many of you know you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost? If you do, you can pray in the Spirit. You see, when they kept telling us that some people don't have the gift of tongues, gift of tongues, some people don't have the gift of tongues, some people don't get the gift of tongues. That's right. They don't give message in tongues. But Brother Random said, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will, you will. Not tongues and then Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost and then the tongues will follow. Even if you don't have a gift of tongues. You're afraid to say amen because you think I'm going to preach another hour. Thank you. I believe you mean it. So when they, when they try to discourage us by saying everybody don't have a gift of tongues, that's right. Amen, 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 we believe it. But we believe that every person who receives the genuine baptism of the Holy Ghost at some time or another, if they yield themselves to that Spirit of God within them, He will testify. Amen. 
Yours may not sound like mine. Mine may not sound like yours. It may not come when mine comes. Mine may not come when yours comes. Some may get it the same night. Some may get it 25 years later. There's quite a few people in this church that had the Holy Ghost, that believed the truth, that never spoke in tongues until they got in an atmosphere where it was legal. You'd be surprised what a legal atmosphere will do. It'll cause the illegal to hatch out to get the atmosphere right. So I want, us to, I, want us to, I want us to do what the scripture says. I want us to earnestly contend for the best gift. I want us to ask God to take us to the place in his spirit where we as a people, wherever you worship, can begin to pray in the spirit. Sometimes English and sometimes in a language that we have never learned. Because there are things that the Spirit of God wants to release out of you and through you that he didn't want the devil to know nothing about. And the next time you're at home praying alone and a sound begins to, you let it go. You may be prophesying mysteries over your own life. Hello, let's worship. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it's so late. I am. I'm sorry, I am. Come on, Holy Ghost. Stir it. To give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken.
will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Oh, great are you, Lord. Oh, and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. He said, be filled, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the Spirit of God breathe on you right now. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Respond to Him.
that have the Holy Ghost, I want you to yield yourselves right now. They'll never understand this out there, but we're not out there right now. Some of you that know you have the Holy Ghost, I want you to let him. I want you to let him pray through you right now. I'm not telling you to start talking. I'm telling you yield. I yield to the Holy Spirit of God. I know that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I yield to him right now that he might make intercession. Yield. Yield. It'll build the atmosphere around you. Yield. I wouldn't dare ask you to put something on. I wouldn't dare ask you to pretend. I wouldn't dare ask you to do that. But I will ask you to yield. I will ask you if you know you're filled with the Holy Ghost to yield your mouth and your voice to him right now and let him make intercession over this house. There doesn't have to be an interpreter to those kinds of tongues. It's your breath. sisters lay hands on some sisters you holy ghost brothers lay hands on some of these brothers so we pour refill out it's your breath in our love jesus so we pour when you make room for him? Do you see what happens when you make room for him? If you feel led to pray for somebody, obey the Lord. anyway. So why don't you yield yourself? You've got nothing to lose. Hallelujah. Fill him. Fill him. hands on somebody. Here's some young boys, young men. Lay hands on them. You love. You bring light to the dark. Don't be afraid to tell them, receive the Holy Ghost. You restore every heart that is broken. Refilling right now. Our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Oh, Let every one of those precious girls that have never prayed in the spirit. His bones will sing. Let every one of them pretty godly girls that have never prayed in the Spirit, let them open their mouth. Fill them so full of the Holy Ghost. Fill them so full of the Spirit of God that they can't contain Him. Our hearts will cry. Hallelujah! will sing. Oh, oh, oh! Shut 
One baptism, many refillings. Claim yours right now. Claim it. I want my refilling. I don't want to go home like I came. Oh! Jesus. It's not a feeling I want you to get. 
it's not some sensation. Holy Ghost. <laughs> you up. Let the Holy Ghost edify you. Let him give you courage. Let him give you consolation. Let him give you blessing. Just gentle, gentle. In the last day, that great day of the feast, John 7, 37, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Out of men's bellies. Put your hand on your belly. You said, Lord, that out of men's bellies would flow rivers of living water. We sing with the, with the, with the uh, saints of the ages, spring up, spring up, oh well. Let the fountains open up. Let the wells that have been stopped 
in the absence of Abraham our father and Isaac the Philistines stopped up the wells let the wells that have been stopped up be unstopped spring up spring Push out the dross. Push out the impurity. Cleanse us. Turn around and love one another. See if you can spread the joy. (laughs) Turn around and find somebody to love. The preacher hadn't preached all night. We could stay another hour or so. Get more, get more. You're the most beautiful people in the world. There came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It gave them peace within Oh, the prophet gave the promise Oh. 
that frees us so from sin. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, come to this water. Oh, come to Tell everybody how wonderful the water is. Water. It's a life-giving river. There is a vast, a vast supply. for you. Oh. 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 Glory be to God. We thank you for your presence. Go with us now in peace. Lord, bless the meal. I know it's late. Lord, please don't let it be that anybody would miss in the morning because of this long service tonight. Touch their bodies. Refresh them. Wake them up with a go-ye and a determination to get here. To worship. Bless the food to our bodies, the hands that prepared it, those that labor for it. Come down in the morning and meet us here, Lord, as we close out this wonderful service, series of services. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Come in the morning, 11. Go out and have breakfast. Come in the morning at 11 o'clock and let's hear what the Lord will do for us. Monday evening at 6 o'clock, there will be a memorial service here for our precious Sister Royale. Come and participate. Bring a meal. <laughs> I know you've cooked more in this last week than some of you have cooked in a long time. But we want to bless the family and the church family. So Monday night after the memorial, We'll have another meal. There will be no service here Tuesday night. Not because we think we've had enough church, but we're going to be taping a podcast with Brother Arnoldus. We want to get one more squeeze out of him while he's here. So there will be no service here Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. I want you to go now in the peace of the Lord. Do your fellowshipping outside. You've been a wonderful, you really shine tonight. You stayed with me most of the way. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Go and, and get ready for your meal. We love you very much tonight, amen. Aren't you glad for the river? Sing it as you go out the door. Oh, there is Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> 